In this video, I wanted to go over one of the uh, linear programming formulations and the particular spreadsheet that uh, we use to uh, put that together. Uh, this one is that second um, uh, one that we did, uh, and there were a couple of you who were a, a little less um, sure about the formulation after we got done. So let's talk about that. Uh, in this one, the company plans to make three models, A, B, and C. So we have three columns up here at the top uh, labeled A, B, and C. And uh, they said that they can make a hundred of them total. So um, let's, um, uh, let's look at that constraint first. That's this one right here in row six. And so we, we uh, want to count up the number of um, models that they make and so what we do is we put a one in each one of the uh, coefficients here so that if we make one of the um, one a one b and one c that we have the total of three over here and we can see that if we put a two in the b here uh, that we would make a grand total of four. So, or if we put zero in there, we make two. If we put zero in here, we'd make one. And with zero in here, we'd make one. Uh, so you can see that putting one in the coefficients there counts up the uh, number that are made. And uh, that's got to be less than 100. So uh, we have that formula that one in there. The second one is that uh, we have uh, enough inventory to make 200 of them. And uh, again, this is just a matter of counting them up and make, making sure that um, we don't make more than 200. Uh, and so this constraint looks just like the other one and says that we're going to make less than 200. Now you might ask yourself the question, uh, if one says 100 and one says 200, we really don't need that one. And that is true. We really don't need that constraint. Okay, But I put it in there for completeness. Now the third one is the paint. And uh, for the paint constraint, it says each one of the Model A's requires 5 gallons. So we put a 5 as a coefficient in here. Uh, each one of the B's requires uh, 7 gallons. So we put a 7 as a coefficient in there. And each one of the C's requires 10 gallons. And so if we make one of each, we count up uh, 22 gallons total. And that has to be less than the 1,000 gallons of paint that we have in inventory. Um, now, uh, marketing, uh, there's two constraints for marketing, A and B. The first one says that for marketing, we want um, at exactly 20 Model A's. And so... Again, we just count those up. If we put 20 in, in the Model A column here, uh, the 1 in our coefficient causes, oops, let me put 20 in there this time, 20. Uh, and we find over here when it does all the counting that that is indeed 20, so that's good. Uh, the B, uh, and we had, have nothing in the other two columns because we don't want to do any of, any counting in those columns. Uh, marketing B says we want to make at least one model, at least five model Bs. Okay, so uh, if I put a five up here, um, then if my one in the uh, appropriate column under the B column in that row uh, then counts five model um, Bs, but doesn't count any model As or Cs because there are there is nothing or a zero implied zero. In those columns and we, of course we put our uh, we want that to be greater than or equal to five and now the tricky one is a proportion here and we want uh, no more than two model C's for every model B and for this uh, you you um, can create a uh, truth table but really what what we're going to do, we can just test it here uh, in class we did the my we came up with the minus two and one uh, and and used our uh, sum product formula over here to do our calculations. But what this really means is that if we make five, when we say that no more than two Model Cs for every Model B, uh, if we make five Bs, 
then that we can put 10 in here for see this no more than two and uh, that turns our sum product formula to zero and uh, we want that to be less than or equal to the zero which is a constraint. If I put 11 in there, that's more than two model C's for uh, a model B, and you can see that that turns positive. So this value should always be positive or negative or zero, um, and we'll always do that uh, fulfill that constraint. And the way we did that, of course, is minus two uh, plus minus two B plus 1c it has to be less than or equal to 0. And so if I turn that back to 10, it's 0. If it's 9, of course, we're making less than 2c's for each b, and it's negative. So that's how we set it up. Now, the only thing I didn't do was how we calculated the profit. And uh, our profit, I'm going to put 1's up here uh, just so we get back to normal. And we're only interested in profit. We don't care about, we don't strictly care about revenue and cost, we just care about the difference between revenue and cost. So for model A's, 16 minus 12, 16,000 minus for revenue, minus $12,000 for cost is 4,000, and the same idea for uh, the B's and C's, and we add those up uh, using our sum product formula. Um, so that's how we do the formulation, and uh, in the next video I'll show you how we, we set up the solver.